If you want to create a Mac app from your Xamarin iOS or Xamarin Forms application, um, I have a video about that, how to do it in under 15 minutes. So that is really cool. It should pop up in my video screen right here. Um, so go check that out right after this video, of course. But there is also another way to do things, and that is Mac Catalyst. I think it was also called Marzipan or something like that. Um, but with that, Apple allows you to run the same code that you run on iOS to run also on a Mac. So that is very cool. You will just get a Mac app basically out of the box for free, and it's working pretty, pretty well. Go check out how to do it. Um, if you want to see how well it's actually doing, there are some great real life examples out there. So go Google for that. Um, but I will show you in this video how to do it very easily with just putting in one NuGet. So here we have another beautiful file new Xamarin Forms application, nothing fancy. You can see it in XAML on the left running in Visual Studio for Mac 2019. On the right, you can see the emulator, no, I should say the iOS simulator um, that is running this actual code. Um, and we're actually not going to change too much of this code. Let me just update the title, of course. So here we go, let's, whoops, not that one. Let's remove this welcome here and let's say Mac Catalyst sample. Okay, there we go. Should hot reload, updates it automatically. Very awesome. So, but what this is really going to be about is um, trying to make this into a Mac Catalyst app. So um, as I've already told, Mac Catalyst is um, a way to uh, create a Mac application out of your iOS application. So Apple is trying to, you know, make more hybrid apps. Um, so basically, I mean, if you looked at this from the Xamarin Forms paradigm, you can create your iOS app, your Android app, all the platforms, um, and you can also include a Mac app, right? So, but that would uh, require you to add a extra Mac project and you will have to tinker with some things there. Um, all of that goes away with kind of this solution. Um, I think, you know, Microsoft is probably thinking about supporting this, uh, the Catalyst stuff as well for Xamarin, uh, but they're not quite there yet. And Frank has done a amazing job by um, supporting this with um, a little NuGet package. And you just drop that in and basically you get the Mac Catalyst app for free. So that is pretty cool. To be honest, I've tried this plugin with um, uh, a couple of existing apps, which are a little bit more complex. They didn't run you know, right out of the box. Um, so you probably want to look at why that is um, and if that is applicable for your application as well. I'm just going to show you um, how simple it is to do this um, with a file new exam informs application. And um, I would be very curious to know if you drop this into your own application, if your Mac Catalyst app just runs out of the box on your Mac, um, what kind of application is it? Please let me know in the comments. I would be very curious to see those apps. I'm going to try to make the Git trends. Maybe you've heard of it by Brandon Minnick. I'm going to try to make that run um, on Mac Catalyst. So maybe there's another video incoming, but I didn't want to keep this from you. So here's a short video to show you how to do it. Um, so here we are just in, in Visual Studio and let me go over to my solution right here and to my iOS um, project. So this NuGet works on all iOS, Xamarin iOS application. So not just forms, but also your traditional Xamarin iOS application, because you know this, this is just about it being a iOS application and not so much it being a Xamarin forms thing or a, a not Xamarin forms thing. So um, I'm just gonna go in here, click manage NuGet package, and I'm going to search for Mac Catalyst. Uh, make sure at the time of recording that the pre-release packages check is checked because it is in pre-release right now, um, 100 beta 3. So by the time you're watching this, it might be out in stable. I don't know if it's ever going to be stable, but you know this is just provided by Frank um, to get you started, see how easy it could be. Uh, so that is really, really cool. Um, also go check out his GitHub page where he has all the code. Um, he is very open to support. Um, um, offer you any answers to your questions. So that is really cool. And of course, if you're making use of any of that, um, consider sponsoring him for um, something on his GitHub page or maybe a Patreon or I don't know what he has set up, but um, make sure to consider that as well. So we're just going to add this package, uh, wait for that to load, it's already done. 
Um, and actually, I'm just going to stop running this and then I'm going to rebuild it. And whatever we do, that's basically all we need to do. <laughs> so this should be a very short video. Um, so because what's happening now, this, this enables a um, feature by default. It adds a couple of build targets. Um, so it will build basically uh, do all the bits necessary to also generate a uh, Mac Catalyst app from your iOS app. So if we now go to the file system here, so right click on our iOS project and go to reveal in finder. There we go. Oops, on my other screen. Here we go. Um, and we go to bin iPhone simulator debug. So it's kind of in a weird spot. Uh, device builds. It should be according to Frank, it's a bug. So it should be in this folder, you should be able to find it. So maybe if you're viewing this, and you can find it, it might be like in your um, configuration folder directly. But for, for me, it's in my device builds, uh, then the iOS simulator that I'm running here that I'm building it for. And here you can say, Preclarum, I still don't know how to pronounce that Frank. So sorry, if you're watching, I hope this was okay. Dot um, Mac Catalyst. So that is the name of the plugin. Um, and you can just go in there. And this is your Mac Catalyst sample. So if I just double click that it should go running. Uh, and we suddenly have a Xamarin Forms app running on a Mac without having to do anything just dropping in a NuGet package. So that is pretty, pretty crazy, right? So that is really cool. Um, so there's a couple of things that you can do. Uh, let's not allow this into my any folders. Um, there's a couple of things that you can do. If you go into the CS proj file, so we right click on the iOS, uh, and you click edit project file. Um, I think in Visual Studio for Windows, you have to unload the project first before you can edit it. Uh, with Visual Studio for Mac, you can just do that right out of the box. And here within a property group that is, um, you know, relevant because of all the conditions that are ran here. Um, but inside a property group, um, you can configure a couple of things for the Mac Catalyst stuff. Actually, let me bring up the GitHub page right now. I have it here. Um, so let's do that. Zoom it in a little bit for you. There we go. Um, so here, here is the repository. So um, again, this is Frank. Sponsor him. Um, this is this is great stuff. He's been doing all kinds of amazing stuff. Um, so, but here about this NuGet. So you need these requirements. .NET Core as well. Um, check if you have the right Xcode. I've done that. It's there. Um, so this is to install our NuGet. I've basically just done that through the UI. Same thing. Um, and here it says the um, path that it actually should be. Um, but you know, for me, it was in another place. So I've opened an issue for that, but it should be fixed or so you have to figure out where the app is for you. Um, but what you can also do is auto run. So whenever we um, add this to our CS project, so if I just copy this, um, put it in here. And like I said, it should be in a property group and make sure that the property group um, is satisfying the conditions that you're actually running it on. So this top one always runs. And whenever I put this in here, then whenever I start debugging my iOS app, then automatically the Mac Catalyst app also comes up. I don't think it will actually debug. I think it will just be launched alongside with the iOS application. Um, because I think there is a couple of limitations right now because you know, it's a beta and, and development ongoing. Uh, but then at least it will, you know, launch together with your iOS app. Um, you can also disable it. So it's enabled by default. But if you want to uh, disable it, you can um, add this tag with enabled false. And um, it should do that as well. If your app crashes, um, you might want to check out why that is. Um, and the way to do that is um, actually navigate to your app and your app is nothing but a um, zip folder, basically. So if I go back here to my finder, um, you can see uh, if I right click it, you can say show package contents. And whenever you do, you can go into the contents, um, you can click Mac OS here. And here you can see that same app. And but this is this is the actual app, um, actually, and you can run this from the terminal. So whenever you do that, you can just say, um, um, run this app. So you can navigate to this CD, etc, etc, run this from the terminal, and you will see the the output um, with stack traces and all of that. So whenever something is wrong, then you can um, check that out this way. Um, archiving signing is not yet supported, hoping to be working soon. So you know, this is nice to play with maybe get your app ready, test all the things is this is something that you actually want to do. Um, but you have to wait a little bit for actually pushing it to the App Store, because that is really, really cool. There are already a couple of apps out there who just use the same exact code for iOS, and also on the actual Mac. Um, so separate apps are no longer longer required. And that is something really powerful for developers. So that is cool. A um, couple of known issues, check them out for yourself. AOT is not supported. Um, AppSemper is not supported extension. So there is a couple of things that um, you can 
not use right now. Again, this is full on in development, um, but go check out if this works for your project. And of course, if you start playing with this, provide Frank back with all the feedback that you found, maybe an issue, maybe contribute back to code and make it awesome. That is pretty mind blowing, right? You just push down that nugget into your project, you just put it there and it automatically creates a Mac Catalyst app for you. Now, this is a very simple project. I already mentioned in more real life mature applications, um, it cost me some problems. So go try this for your own application. If it's something that interests you, let me know how it goes in the comments. I want to see your application running on that Mac. So um, show them to me. Um, if you run into any problems, um, reach out to me. I'm, I'm not an expert in this area. I'll tell you that, but um, you know, maybe we can figure out something together or go directly to um, the repository that is shown and uh, do some things there. Thank you for watching. As always, please like this video if you actually liked it and subscribe to my channel to be notified of new content automatically. And I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.